on this show, we like to think that uh, your favorite saying, it's five o'clock somewhere, <laughs> all the That's time. Right. And we've been able to toast uh, bubbly at work, of course, uh, but we are not alone today because uh, Charlie Adler is here, and he also gets to toss him back, and he tells <laughs> all in his book, I drink on the job. This is the best name for a book. I mean, what a just, Thank you. It, it catches your attention. Hey, hey, listen, it's true. I've been drinking on the job for 12 years and I take my job seriously. <laughs> How do your we resume? get your uh, job? Right on top of your resume. <laughs> you, you know, when people ask me, I'll go to a chamber of commerce meeting. They say, what do you do for a living? I say, I drink on the job. All I'm right. a wine professional. Well, I'm, Charlie, I'm proud of that. You're in good company, as you know. <laughs> and, dead, uh, yeah. I'll never turn down a, a glass of wine. May I, may I open one? And uh, We're open for you. Go okay. ahead. We've got All some right, good, good Bordeaux. Tell, tell me what, what you brought. I brought a nice Bordeaux from a great vintage, 2005, um, a little on the expensive side, $30, but it's a great blend of Cabernet and Merlot, delicious wine. And then what I decided to do is bring a Virginia wine, because yes, like I'm that. a huge proponent of Virginia wines. Hey, maybe get some well, let's start with publicity that. for that. There's some great Virginia wines out there, actually. You want to try that one? Yeah, let's, let's start with the hometown. This, this stuff. one cost about the same as this one, quality-wise. I think it's about the same. Uh -huh. I think the taste is very similar. I also think it's amazing what Virginia can do now. The the uh, the grapes of varietals are the same. So in other words, this is a Bordeaux and this is a Bordeaux style wine. So in other words, this is sort of a, a America's copy of Bordeaux. Tell us about this winery and where it's located. Terrera Winery. Well, <laughs> it's located in Loudoun County. This is one of their library wines. Um, they, what does that mean, library wine? Uh, it means they charge more. Uh, it's, <laughs> also, it's very astute. You know, big, big question in wine. What's the difference between a, a, a less priced wine and expensive wine? Is one better than, than the other? That is not a good determinant of quality. Mm -hmm. Price does not determine quality in wine. You determine quality in wine, what you like to drink. And that's what I wrote the book about, which okay. is you, right. not me. Okay, well, this Virginia wine out, uh, I'm looking at it. Now, this is a good thing to do, right? Hey, let's yeah, talk yeah, about what you should do. You see all these wine professionals doing all the first, swishing first and smelling. You, first, you know, hold it by the stem. Why? So by you don't warm stem. it up. But right. at cocktail parties, I hold it like that because it's easier, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. Then you look at the wine against the white background. Pink is pretty good. Uh, <laughs> what are you looking for? Bugs, corks, or, you know, hopefully not that, you know. Can you see through the wine? What color We're is this clear. wine? We're clear. That's good. Pretty red? Okay, yeah. it's a red wine. We know that. Then we swirl it a little bit. And that's just to it's safer to do it on the table than uh, hitting you, your have guests. Have you ever done this? You know, I swirled a martini glass. Especially the cocktail glass. party, you don't want to yeah. do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I swirled a martini glass one time. I'm not very popular at bars. Okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know, it's like, anyway, you swirl it, wake swirl it up. Swirl it around, okay. All right, now stick your nose in there. Get your nose in there. Come on, let's do it. <sighs> Smells like wine. <laughs> Smells like uh, cherries, blueberries. <laughs> what a connoisseur you are, uh, Natasha. Yeah. That is me. I'm so there impressed. You go. It's not tequila, though. You notice that, okay? And that's so, one of Doug's really favorites. Okay, actually. all right, all right. But let's do the important part. Can I, can I do this? I'm going to slurp. Yeah. I'm going to slurp. I created the word okay. slurp. Slurp. Okay. Please go slurp. ahead. Let me show you. Sounds like mouthwash. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Why do professionals spit? <laughs> I was worried that you're going to spit this direction. <laughs> Why do professionals spit? They. So, they give up. Try so they're too not many. like this. <laughs> okay. There you so go. the okay. whole purpose of spitting is you get all the flavor of the wine and you don't have to swallow and you can drink, you know, 50 or 60 Aren't you months. supposed to also look for a good wine that has the legs on the glass when you swish? No. That means sugar no. content, right? <laughs> uh, no, I've heard that before. Right, I don't know right, what the heck right, that right. is. I have too. Yeah. Legs of the wine. Okay. This is what I always say about a wine. The, the, the best way to understand what's going on in the glass is stick your nose in there and to taste it. Everything else, the cork, the legs, and everything else are too far from the scene of the crime. As I say, if you go, if you're a detective and you want to find what happened at a murder, you go to the scene of the crime. The legs of the wine, the cork, that's miles and miles away. Let's get our schnauz Good in there. Good comparison. You know, it, it, that's, that's, that's how I talk, by the way. I, I'm the kind of per creative right. type that says wine's meant to be enjoyed. Now, Natasha, I want you to take, take a sip of this and you describe the subtleties to him. And I want to see if, if you're right. And I'll describe what subtleties <laughs> I, I detect, okay. all right? He's forcing me to drink. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. You know, I just had a peppermint mint oh, before this. This may not be good. To, well, I'm start. sure there's no peppermint in I'll here. I'll start. You start. I, first of all, it really dry. I, I taste a dryness. Yeah. It dries yeah, out right. right away. Do you get the scratchiness of the tannins, you know, from the red wine? A yeah, yeah. Tongue. Yeah, that's that's it, part it, of the dryness. I, yeah. I, I, okay. I sense, yeah, right. We call that in the wine business not dryness. We call that the tannin, which is which is really cool about red wine. Red wine has 200 or so chemicals that are healthy for you. By the way, I drink red wine every day. I like red a lot. I, I'm heart, not a white course, girl. You know, and uh, it's good for you. Also, the tannin or scratch get softer and softer as the wine gets older. This hmm. is a baby wine. And when you're eating food, foods that are spicy, foods that have spice or meat or fat, primarily fat, will soften. So the whole concept of red wine is it needs food. Now, mm -hmm. there's two reasons wine professionals say wine needs food. One is because it sucks. 
It's not a good wine, <laughs> meaning, oh, this wine needs food, like right, it's right, horrible, right. or it's a really tannic young red wine, which just needs something to soften it, a piece mm -hmm. of cheese, a mm -hmm. piece of cheddar, a uh, steak, a uh, good pairing. vegetarians, vegetarians, you know, uh, butter. Now, you've been drinking since um, you had teenagerhood. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, let it all yeah, out Yeah, well, I'm hoping to Started at 13? That. What's going you know on what? here? The I, mad police are waiting for you. I know I'm in trouble already, but when I was 13, my father said to me, you can choose the wine at the dinner table, and you can pour it, you can have a glass, but he gave me two rules. He gave me two rules. He said, number one, uh, uh, white wine with fish, red wine with meat, and he said, the other one is always sniff the cork. Today, we know both those rules are wrong. So I started off on the but wrong foot. Maybe your love uh, that came from your father or your mother. They they were into wine or no? Um, I'm from Pennsylvania. The selection of wine was Matus, Blue Nun, and what other thing you know <laughs> had a, a, a screw top on it. And by the way, I'm a big screw top proponent, but we won't go there right now. The the thing is, is that the wine quality was pretty poor. Red wines were really horrible. Today, all things. The quality of wine from $6 up is so good that, and I even tell people, if you're going to start out in wine, start out under $10. Mm -hmm. I swear, uh, if you drink like me, which is every day, um, you can't drink $40 bottles of wine like this all the time. So, so I you, literally... So you go around with all this knowledge and basically teach people... Right. I you know, that they shouldn't uh, be afraid to try things. You know, I mean, what's the difference between a, a, a Prada bag and a regular bag you buy in a department store? One costs $700, price another tag. costs 30 The price tag. Is a Prada mm -hmm. a better bag? I always say, it, you know, if you feel that you want to spend $100 or more, go for it. That has nothing to do with the quality of the wine. It has to do with how much you're worth. But, Charlie, you, you're, you're, uh, this is interesting because you're, you're projecting yourself, you're presenting yourself as, as a wine man of the people here today, but you've had some pretty extraordinary experiences at, at uh, embassies and, and things of the sort. Uh, yeah, I mean, mostly good. You know, I'm going to say that. I've done over 40 embassies. I've been at the French embassy so many times, I almost consider that my second home. And we've done, <laughs> you know, Beaujolais Nouveau, you know, another, another inexpensive now, and wine. What, what, what role are you there? I, I'm actually an event provider, so I actually would um, rent the embassy, hire a caterer, sell the tickets through my group, Tasty C. Tasty mm -hmm. C is my full-time job. So I, I, drink, I drink on the job through my full-time job at Tasty C. Hey, it's is, a good job if you, you can know. get it, really? right? Great job. Yeah. Charlie, what a job. do you think the wine industry has really blown up? I was telling you before yeah, we, we started the that. show that I was in a gas station just paying for gas, and um, the one side of the gas station was just wine. Were you just really and, thirsty? And I just had to grab a bottle, <laughs> like, oh, hey, little guy. I noticed it. I did not okay. want to. What's going on here? But um, you really notice it, even in grocery stores, they're really dressing up their wine sections. It's really over the last five to ten years, I would say. It's, it's, a, it's amazing. Wine. We're talking about 7-Eleven. You know, when I started out, you know, years ago, like, uh, well, it's 12 years ago, wine was just something special. Now it's everywhere. When I say it, it's everywhere. It's at the 7-Eleven. You go to an Indian restaurant. Ten years ago, they'd have two wines, a white and a red. Today, mm -hmm. they've got 40 wines. So today, you don't even have to think about wine. It's everywhere you go, supermarkets, et cetera. So the, really, the trick is just to find something you like and not to worry about price anymore. It's interesting. Quality has gotten way better at lower price points. You can literally choose great wines, very inexpensive. How about Virginia wine? How many times do I get it? Is Virginia wine any good? And I look at them, I said, in, in blind tastings, I've chosen Virginia wines over French wines of, of double the price. Pretty neat. Unbelievable. Charlie, Unbelievable. thanks for coming in. We're going to yeah, pimp out your book good. one more time. I drink on the job. Charlie Adler, he's a local guy that knows what he's talking about. And Charlie, thank you for helping us drink thanks, on the guys. job. Thanks, guys. Cheers to you all. <laughs> Appreciate it. Keep drinking on the Cheers. job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Come thank back. Thank you, Charlie. Real soon.